Agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, I guess we're to Martin. I guess we're to you. Okay. First of all, I'd like there she is. I'd like to uh, ask for a short closed session in the meeting to discuss personnel. Won't take long. Um, <clears throat> We got the notice uh, yesterday that FEMA, we've known that FEMA was accepting applications for individual assistance, uh, but we got the notice that they're now approved the public assistance, which is what would reimburse counties and cities for public districts for their expenses uh, from the from the flooding. And I think I told you at our last meeting that we're, we're not going to apply for any um, damage uh, reimbursements because we didn't have any uh, that our work on cleaning up the North Little Rock Road North Main uh, is uh, is done a regular time which isn't otherwise qualified for, for for reimbursement but they have a pilot program that would cover that work under uh, regular time and I'll, I will apply for that um, there's been uh, a lot of reports that we met with Frank, the city attorney, over uh, the what's happening with Levy District Number Two and their and their levy damage. And while we we really don't have anything to do with that necessarily, uh, it still affects us. And 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 they're kind of in emergency mode because they're. You may have read the articles in the paper, looking forward to the spring thaw and the water coming down, and they've got a hole in their levy. Uh, and so they're trying to find a way to get the uh, approvals from the uh, Corps of Engineers and FEMA so they can make whatever interim repairs they can make to get past the, the, the spring floods if we have them. Uh, and our role in this would be to support their efforts. So um, if they <coughs> ask us to write a letter to a congressman or whoever, uh, I think it's in our interest to do so, and, and we will. Um, I went to a meeting of the uh, Transportation Action Committee, which is a group of government officials who meet with MoDOT on a quarterly basis, and it was really interesting. Uh, I've reported to you in the past that MoDOT was in this kind of maintenance mode because of the lack of revenues and that they weren't going to do any significant improvements and they were only going to maintain the numbered routes and the lettered routes would only be fixed in emergency situations and they had this austerity program. Well, at this meeting, they said they're not going to have to implement that. That the recovery of the economy has generated more sales tax uh, and more, um, um, they got a, a revision in what they can declare as, declare as matching funds against, matching against federal funds, so they've been able to federalize some of their normal maintenance operations and um, and so they're they're while well, they aren't going to do any major improvements well they also we got the federal highway bill which predicts kind of gives them a predictable source of income while they don't have any major improvements scheduled um, they're going to start looking at doing some more than just maintaining the, the the littered route so so that's good news for anybody that travels on uh, state roads um, Here's another matter that is of some concern to us. Um, I think it was two years ago, there was a lawsuit that uh, ended up with the courts declaring the, uh, the use tax that every county and every city has been collecting. It's like when you go to buy your car and you go to, the, to, to register it, you pay your sales tax, and, 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 and the suit was that this was a tax that was never voter approved, which has kind of been the custom. And, and so 
uh, the the counties and, and lots of cities had never adopted a, formally adopted a use tax. They were just collecting it, and uh, and, and now the courts were saying that they couldn't. Uh, it was a kind of a settlement that delayed the implementation of that ruling so that cities and counties could um, could put it to the to, to the voters. The, the city of St. Genevieve already has a use tax, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, but the county didn't, doesn't. Uh, so they need to get voter approval for a use tax, which people have already been paying. I mean, nobody's not paid it. Uh, to prevent a situation where people will kind of look at the the tax if you go buy a forty thousand dollar car, you know the, the the county portion of that tax could be six hundred dollars, and that might make it worth tripping over to Illinois and buying your car. Uh, so, again, uh, there's nothing for us to do except perhaps support that effort as it's underway, because we don't want people leaving town to buy things. Well, they can do nothing <laughs> yeah, it's no no reason for us not to support that. Um, Lodot approved the bids for the bid for the hiking trail and the beer engineering contract. Uh, that's on the agenda tonight. Uh, Alderman Hook asked if I would recap kind of the history of this because it's been a long time in the works and people don't remember. I think it was eight years ago. Well, not only don't remember, a lot of us weren't here. Yeah, right. Eight years ago, a plan was put together called the uh, Hiking, Biking, and Riverfront Beautification Plan. And a grant was received from MoDOT to implement this plan. Um, the plan called for a 10-foot wide uh, trail and improvements to what is now kind of the parking area up by the, 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 the ferry landing. Um, and, and, I, and I don't know how that happened, and I don't know who developed it, but they didn't ask the permission of the property owner and nor did they kind of check whether this 10 foot wide trail was feasible and, and if you have a hiking biking trail it has to be 10 foot wide for, for the state regulations so when it came time to try and get the easements or a lease or something from the railroad to beautify the the the, the, the parking area at the ferry landing they said no we don't like people crossing our tracks in the first place, and we're certainly not going to give you permission to do something that's going to increase, arguably, traffic across the tracks, and we don't think that's something we want to be part of. In addition to that, you can't get a 10-foot wide biking lane under the floodgate. So there's a lot of negotiations and conversations with the, 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 the state about how we could solve these problems. Uh, the trail begins just north of the North Gavery Creek. Which is where? The, where the gauge is. The, the flood About gauge. On the, on, north on north of downtown. Yeah. Okay. Main Street. Main okay. Street. Okay. All right. The west side of, of Main Street. And as it stands now, goes all the way out to the railroad tracks at the landing, but on the on the west side of the railroad tracks, because we can't they won't let us cross over. The the, the railroad won't. Do we owe any prop or own any property on the west side of the railroad track? Well, we own flood dial property al along the way, but but nothing when we get it's to the crossing. It's west of the of Main Street. West of Main of Street, the physical street. So it's the west side of the street. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty no. much replacing on Place. Main Street. There would be like replacing the sidewalks, just right. a little bit wider. You're constructing yeah. sidewalks where there aren't any. Right. Okay. I don't know. I walk that area. Let me back up. Sidewalks are in bad shape. And I hope you don't mind. No. Okay, we're going to start where the, the guide is up there. said where the, River where the flood was. Right. Okay. We're going to start there. Right. Just north of there. All right. The other side of the creek. Okay. And we're going to the side right now that has the sidewalks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all those get replaced. All right. Then once we get the river, what do we do when we get there? But when we get to the railroad, to the railroad right of way, yeah. the north end, we stop. Which is on this side of the west side of the railroad track. So on, on this, this side, this of the floodgates. No, yes. no, we go through the floodgates. Oh. But now that we've narrowed it to five feet, 
the states allowed us to just mark on the pavement. And we go what through do you the do? Just put, a, put a painted line. Yes, paint the lines okay. and put a little bicycle emblem on it. Got to put some signs up right. uh, for traffic signage okay. so people know that there's kind of this. So when you say we go through the floodgates, do we go actually on Main Street to go yes. through the floodgates? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I'm sorry, I missed the part where we went from 10 feet to 5 feet. We had to go from 10 feet because when you're at the floodgates, you, you can't take 10 feet of that gap. So just in it that was, area? Yeah, well, that was that. Or is the whole trail 5 feet? No, we have to do 5 feet. We had to eliminate the biking portion of it because we can't achieve the 10 foot width. Okay. So we just made it a hiking trip. Gotcha. Now you don't want to get your bicycle on. I mean, it's not you know, it's not going to be anything to keep somebody from riding a bicycle on it. But so it, once we get to the floodgates or to the property that the railroad owns, and we're just well, it's, it's it. It stops. People can go on. You, you can crawl. I mean, you can just go ahead and yeah, cross. Right. I understand that. Yeah. Right. It's just not going to be painted out and designated as such. Right. But there's nothing to prevent nice. anybody from. No, that, they will. I mean, right. that's the whole idea. Okay. It's right. just. I mean, really. I, I, Finding some place for people and citizens who live here to view the river has kind of been a problem for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think the thought was that if we can, we have this grant, we can create this this improved area where people sure. can go to view the river. Okay. I, again, I, I don't know if that was, but but the, the railroad didn't didn't want to cooperate. So they, you know, we're not doing anything to beautify the area. Not not not. No. Not, not as not as a function grant. of this grant. Are we going to lose any street width? No. Through this, okay, good. It'll the easements. They've all been secured. Because a, a lot of cities, like you go to St. Louis and they've taken big portions of gravel and such, and they put by, and it, it, it's a nightmare because there's only two lanes, and then all of a sudden you lose a lane because of a bike thing. No, these uh, yeah. this this will go over the existing. Yeah. Car. And there is, it's a little bit wider in some places and oh, it'll sure. encroach okay. on the, the property, but it, it, you yeah. won't notice much difference in terms of. You will if the bikes is on it, because they got the right of way. If the bikes are on? On the, it's the path. It's not, it's got a bike path. Not a bike path. Bike Technically, it's end not. They'll use them. Well, yeah. well, they can use They, they could use the sidewalk. They got the right of way. Well, then why do it? Well, for God's sake, John. No, I'm just saying it. You just. Make a mistake. I'm making a statement. I just Pedestrians and bikes have right away on the street. Right. Yeah. Well, and really, if it's on one side of the street, there should only be bike traffic going one way. People should not ride their bikes against traffic. Theoretically, right? You, you're supposed to ride your bike to ride in the traffic, street, or, or walk ride with traffic, and follow traffic rules. <laughs> but nobody mm -hmm. does that. Right. Yeah. But it being five foot wide, you can probably get away with both. I wouldn't right. want to ride it just because, you know, you. Well, it'll have handicap ramps at the curves at the at the intersection, so I guess you won't have the problem with hop, hopping curves and that kind of. See, thing. I'm, I'm kind of concerned that we're not really doing anything up at the river to beautify it. Well, that's not saying we still can't. There is actually, we can. I thought we had talked about that before. We talked so about that, and there's actually a in the community foundation grant. There's there's money sitting in an account there. It's seven thousand dollars by now, Sandra, something I'm like that. From that. That set aside for that, and at, at the time before the start, Mississippi Line was on board, and the people with the ferry was on board of about yeah. doing something up there. But we get back to the railroad issue. Yeah. They don't what want we people. Do? One of the delays in this whole thing was really figuring out who owned all of that. There was so such amount of time spent that the railroad denied that they owned it, and there was some per property owners the way the way it all fits together there. The railroad don't own, I don't think, the whole landing itself. But it finally came back in dealing with them that they said they owned, I guess, enough of it and said, we don't want you over there. So whether they will agree to let us do anything over there as far as making it any better, I don't know if we're going to be able to get away with that or not. Well, it, there's land they don't own that could be, could be improved. Um, and, and so we could make an area for people to come and sit and view the so river. Where's this area that they don't know? South of the landing. This north little triangular piece, the Mississippi line, huh? North of the north of the driveway that leads to the ferry, not south. North. Okay. Yeah, I think Missi they, Mississippi, Mississippi line, line was a little, is actually a little bit. The owner of all that property along what so, we that, that so you gravel work area, area tracks and you make a lift, and they they own. So that so Sandra yeah. and company are working on. 
plans and things. I'm not exactly that, sure it's and, how it's and, broke and, up. But. And, it, and we've had the right to, to cross the tracks. We, they just weren't going to let us make improvements. So no, nobody is going to be constrained from crossing it. And if you go north of there and create kind of an area where people can sit and see the river, and then they're doing pretty much what they've always done anyway. So, is it both railroads giving us trouble, or just one? Just one. The only one owns that. It's well, Burling, yeah. Burling's Northern owns the. Burling Northern and Santa Fe both own. Yeah, UP yeah. goes through there. Not not UP. Yeah. Well, UP owns this right away, but they don't own the track. I mean, the track. Um. Sanders here is going to give a report uh, on the Wetlands Development <coughs> Committee, so you can look forward. Are you prepared to discuss that? So you can look forward to hearing from her on that. Um, since I wrote this, we received the approval from the court or from the Department of uh, Natural Resources for the water line work that we had submitted, and uh, we didn't know that at the time. So uh, we're uh, prepared to proceed with with, with, with that work. Um, we talked about uh, emergency operations plan, so uh, we had a meeting and uh, uh, Mayor and, and Alderman Couch and, and Felix Meyer and, and me, and um, we um, kind of came up with a game plan, an initial game plan, uh, that will then involve as we go <coughs> the first responders and the ambulance district and the health department and uh, to try and come up with a Kind of a comprehensive operations plan so that when uh, something if something were to happen everybody would know their role everybody would know where to go and what they're supposed to do and 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 and, and it's a it, it's a good thing uh, i have surveyed um, communities uh, to see if anybody else had one that we could use and uh came up with farmington perryville doesn't have one and festus doesn't have one and well, Festa said they have one, but it's 20 years old uh, and not suitable for for use today. And, uh, and there's folks aren't doing it. And you would think, particularly cities on the river like Herculaneum, would would, would be thinking the same way we are. But uh, they're not, and so uh, there aren't a whole lot of models for us to follow. It's not just flood related. It would be any natural what? disaster right. or pandemic. It's going to cover every potentiality that we can. Come up with. FEMA has a guideline which is uh, in, in kind of the best spirit of, of, of bureaucracy. It's uh, like 250 pages long. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's a little more than we need. Uh, but we'll figure it out and we're going we're to get that done. And finally, we heard from the Corps of Engineers, and uh, uh, these, this is what, what they, where they said they are in the, in, in, in the process. Uh, and and, and they expect to finish it for the dollars they promised us, and it's just a question of when. And uh, right now, uh, you know, they're, they, they state that uh, they're moving for a, a public review in the next several, several weeks. So, because they're, they've done their internal review. And this covers what? This is the final report for the flood mitigation in St. Genevieve that will identify what the Corps thinks needs to be done. Uh, and and what the costs are and what our share is and we'll identify the projects uh, relating for which we could now spend money our money and get right. done but and that's what we gave them it. the 17,000 or something a while back yeah right, right. Yeah. okay yeah. okay and uh, we, we voted to give it to them I, I, right we, we didn't give it to them until now we're ready to give it to them <laughs> okay I wasn't gonna give it to them until I knew they were gonna is, get it done this is the super scale back plan I mean we're not they're not doing it, what not they the were. sixteen million dollars is now two million dollars, so we have more than enough money to to match what our share would be, and then money to do the other things that we want to do with that money that are kind of consistent with the commitment you made to the citizens when they all voted right. to. It's to a shame all that money yeah. and time was spent on all those other plans. I, it's a nice know. opportunity to get the creek cleaned out, maybe. Right. Yeah, and that would that, be whatever wonderful. you think works. <coughs> well, you yeah. know, that, yeah. And then that's for me. That money for a project like that is going to be hard to come by, so we, got, yeah. we shouldn't miss the opportunity. I agree. The um, you know we, we the recreation was phase four of that project was this, a trail on top of the the, the, the levee. Uh, we're trying to convince them to let the money that we spend for this trail, which isn't 
on that property be counted as 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 match, and so we can get twenty five percent someday maybe reimburse seventy five percent of that. But uh, they're they're kind of resisting it, but they're still taking it under consideration. And the mayor asked me, "Have they answered that question?" And I said, "No. This is the only correspondence I've had with them since we last met two months ago, two and a half months ago." They definitely move at their own pace. Mm -hmm. So, barring any questions, that concludes my report. Martin, I got one question going back to that hiking trail. Who owns the property on both sides before you cross the, the tracks there? Remember years ago, they used to have a trailer court up there on the left, and then on the right there, they had... Ron Inman owned it when, when they had the, the trailer park, and he sold it to Mississippi Line. Okay. And then the other side, too, where they had the... No, the other, side, the other side is owned either by Hogue or... I can't remember her name. The, an older lady who still controls the property in okay. <sighs> Jane. Yeah, I'd have to look it up. Right. Yeah. Okay. Kenny Hogue owns some of that. Yeah. Over there, between the tracks and the river. <clears throat> Anything else? Anything from the board? Oh, I've got. Oh, well, Sandra, you're first on the list. I have handouts. Dave, I mean, he's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I told him I finally started working on this one. It's been sitting there for a couple of years. That's our page. Absolutely. You can take one of those. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. Would you take one of those? Sure. <coughs> well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so, I'll go through some numbers for you. Um, in January, we had 494 visitors through the Vez, uh, Welcome Center as compared to 574 in January of last year. Obviously, we were down. Um, weather had a big impact on that. The last week in January was, a, you know, the weather got better, the streets were busy. Um, a lot of merchants said that they did better on that last weekend in January than they had the whole month. So. We were glad to see that, and of course, the first weekend in February was excellent because, um, as I'll report later, this was a busy weekend for us, too. Um, <coughs> recent events, so last weekend was the Chocolate Walk and the Queen's Ball. Both were on Saturday, February 6th. Both had excellent attendance and resulted in more foot traffic in our downtown shops and restaurants. The Chocolate Walk event, which is sponsored by the St. Jody Downtown Renewal Program, did sell out with 300 tickets. Um, and the streets, uh, if you were out and about on Saturday, it was a beautiful day and there were lots of people <coughs> out. Um, the Welcome Center did serve as a check-in point for the Chocolate Walk, for both for the merchants to come and get their balloons and materials for uh, promotions and also for the downtown renewal people to um, hand out the boxes and the maps uh, for all the people for the Chocolate Walk. Um, at the Welcome Center, um, we have the Lewis and Clark Across Missouri exhibit. You might have seen that in the paper recently. Um, it will be set up through the end of this month. And on February 26th, we will also be participating in the first Art Walk of 2016. There will be a Mardi Gras theme for this um, Art Walk, so you know, get out and have some fun with that. At the Welcome Center, we're going to be hosting the local <coughs> artist group called Domage. This is um, the D apostrophe I M A J. That stands for the first letters of all of the artists who are um, a member of that group. They're the group that normally, um, for the last oh almost a year, has had an exhibit of their art at the Jean Baptiste Ballet House, which is um, Bernie Schramm's house, um, and it is now owned by the uh, Bolduc Museum. And so they've been having their art set up in there. And of course, since the Bull Duke is closed right now, they weren't going to be able to participate in the February Art Walk. So we invited them to come over to the Welcome Center. And they're going to be set up with a special exhibit of miniature art. Nothing 
uh, larger than eight and a half by 11. So that should be interesting. Um, I began the process of signing up um, volunteers who would like to participate in the Saturday morning greeting uh, program during the summer. Basically, this starts in May and is every Saturday morning through um, Labor Day weekend. So Memorial Day through Labor Day on Saturdays, we try to have people dressed in French colonial costume. They start out at the Welcome Center. We give them a basket and a little cheat sheet about when all the houses were built, just in case. Um, they get asked some questions like that, and they walk around the downtown, pop in and out of the shops, have their picture taken with people who may be out on the streets, and just kind of generally add some atmosphere to the downtown. And so we're starting that. If anyone um, has participated in that in the past and would like to sign up for a weekend this year, call the Welcome Center at 883-7097. And if you haven't done it before and you think you might want to, but you're hampered by lack of colonial costume, don't worry, we can get you fixed up with a colonial costume. We have people that will loan those out for you. Um, coming up, uh, we'll be participating in as, as an exhibitor in an expo sponsored by um, St. Louis Media Company called the Chocolate and Wine Expo. This is in St. Charles on February 19th. And this event is taking the place of an event that we did last year that was called the Working Women's Survival Show. That was also in <coughs> St. Charles. Um, I'm kind of hoping that this one will have um, a a demographic that is more closely aligned with our target demographic and that we might get um, a little more um, results back from our efforts there. So um, that's coming up on February 19th. And um, as Martin mentioned, we do have a task force that is um, specifically, we have several task forces right now, but one of them is specifically um, looking at the issue of um, the top of the levee and the land outside the levee and even inside the levee um, where there might be an opportunity to have sort of like a wildlife refuge. There already are birds that fly through that flyway um, and a lot of other animals too that um, people could be walking on top of the levee and viewing the wildlife and so we've been having some meetings with the Fish and Wildlife Service representatives and also with the Missouri Department of Conservation representatives just to find out what kind of programs might be out there that um, even despite if we have some funds here locally that what kind of programs are out there at the state and um, federal level that might be able to tap in and do some um, providing a budget for that type of activity. So um, we've been meeting with them. We met last Friday and um, they have agreed to come back with at least an, a list of the types of things that might be available through some of those funding programs. And um, so you have in front of you the Missouri Travel Guide. Um, this is a program, or um, this is what's handed out in all of the welcome centers across the state. Um, it's mailed out to all of the inquiries that come in. There's an online version of it on the internet. And um, it is divided up the same way that um, uh, we divide things up at the Welcome Center. There are um, regions of the state, of course, St. Genevieve is in the southeast region. If you turn to the page that's marked in your magazines, page 111, you'll see um, several of the St. Genevieve attractions here. We have um, 24 listings in the attraction section, which is pretty exciting because we have more listings than any other community um, in southeast Missouri with the exception of Cape Girardeau. I might also point out that that also means we have, um, even though they're not in our region, I counted up and we have more than Kimswick and we have more than St. Charles. So um, I'm pretty sure we have more to offer than Kimswick and St. Charles. They actually probably have more, but they don't have them listed. So we've got more on the ball than they do and that counts for something too. Um, getting our um, businesses and eligible attractions to get listed in this is something that um, we constantly are reaching out to, you know, to those business owners and helping them with that if they need help, um, encouraging them to um, get their listings updated and um, make the most of that because if they're eligible to be listed in here, there's no cost to them to do that. They can highlight themselves, and you'll see, like, when you look at some of the lodging charts and you see one that's um, highlighted on there, they can pay a little extra to be highlighted, but um, there's no charge just for their listing. 
So, um, and I just wanted to point out that this time of the year, we're also looking a lot at our um, statistics, and um, you may have seen an article that came out last week about um, the state of Missouri recently released their fiscal year 15 um, summary of the number of visitors across the state of Missouri. Um, they had 40 million visitors logged in Missouri, and that totaled 12.4 billion in spending across the state. Um, these are on the 17 SIC codes that they determine are applicable to um, tourism, and that meant um, 297,000 jobs in the state of Missouri. In our county, that translates to 15.7 million in expenditures across the county and 493 jobs across our county that are supporting of the tourism industry in some fashion. So um, we're looking at things like that. We're also looking at um, we have a, a sign-in sheet at the Welcome Center, and not everyone signs in. You know, some people just come in and out, and they don't really want to sign their name. But about 30% of the people do sign, and it's pretty indicative of um, the areas that people draw from. I mean, we get international people who sign, and and people from a, a variety of locations. But um, we're also looking at our data at the end of the year and looking at, um, for instance, and no surprise, St. Louis is our largest draw, and that is where we tend. To to focus um, a lot of our um, outreach in terms of our marketing and PR efforts. So St. Louis, um, Cape Girardeau, Kansas City, Springfield, and Columbia are our largest Missouri markets. And our largest um, states, which also mirrors um, the state of Missouri's um, tourism statistics, but our largest uh, state uh, in terms of visitors, no surprise, is Illinois, um, followed by Kansas, and then Tennessee and Arkansas. So um, in our top foreign countries are Canada, France, and the United Kingdom. So we just take this time to, um, you know, to kind of look at those kinds of things and, and really to uh, reevaluate um, make sure that our target market is on track and that we're um, reaching out to the population and reaching the population that um, we want to attract to St. Genevieve. So, any questions? Those are yours to keep. If anyone wants any more, like you wanna send them out or some people come down to pick up information like that when they have like a wedding in the family or something. So you're free to um, come down and, and pick up as many of those as you would like. Cause we order them from the state and they send them to us at no charge, so we'll get more if we run out. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you've got Dave, re you have Dave's report there. If anybody has any questions, I'm sure Mark can. Yeah, they called and said we really need to get some sleep in case it snows tonight. Okay. So might be overnight again. Yeah. <clears throat> this guy's been doing a good job this week. <clears throat> yeah, they've been Great. getting a lot yes. of online compliments. Great. Yeah. There's some, uh, that mulching the city park, uh, when we, when Dave took over, we kind of started evaluating things and the mulch was all deteriorated and it was never installed at the proper depth. And so they're kind of putting it back the way it needs to be in order to meet kind of safety standards for. For, for, for the park. There's a lot of park kind of deferred maintenance things that they've been catching up with. On hauling the rock with the dump site road, uh, the, the, the dump site road was underwater and when the water receded, uh, it kind of had disappeared. So um, we were able to get rock from the rock that SEMA purchased and made available to us from Fisher Quarry. It was just a matter of going and picking it up and, uh, and we did. We, we went and got as much as, as we could haul. And needed to to rebuild that road good. and uh it was a, as i said the rock was was at no cost the hauling cost us obviously um the leveling off the ground around the old swimming pool you know we discussed the uh counties perhaps willing to uh to, to make a contribution to the purchase of equipment if we can produce a, a plan for a playground that's the area where we would propose that it go that'd and be a so, perfect place for yeah a and so uh really we're kind of dressing it up in anticipation of coming up with a plan for the, for, the, for the use of that property and asking the county to, to help us out with equipment purchases. Um, the dog park has like proved to be this like really popular place. I think the crew has done a lot to, 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 to make it look good without spending a lot of money, using old pipes and 
boards and things. They've, they've really done an excellent I, job. I think that we really got to recognize that. Yeah. Right. Um, they have developed all, everything that's in the park pretty much with what spare stuff we had laying around. Right. Like the big piece of pipe and, and all that. And the guys did, did a, a very good job. I thought that. David said they have $30 tied up. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Very, very good that's job amazing. by our staff. The park board uh, is going to spend some of the money that you've given to them. Uh, not, not a lot, but they're going to buy a bag dispenser and uh, inventory of bags that should last a good long time. And then they're going to make us, the, we have uh, rules. Now, I, I think, and Frank can kind of uh, mean me need to opine on this. I think if we adopt park rules, it needs to be done by the Board of Aldermen if we expect to try and enforce them. So uh, hey, Martin, well, they're going to come up with a set of rules. We're going to look at them and then propose them to you for adoption before we post them. Martin, while we're talking about the park board, does anyone have the authority in the park board to go out and order stuff? And so they're coming through the city of St. John. Well, they come through the city, but the park board makes a decision, and, and I'm there. Uh, and then well, I think the concern is they'll come to Pam and say if board. when they identify something they want to purchase, that board members actually source it and purchase it. Uh, and, and I think that Rick, maybe you can expand on. We had some issues like that in the city years ago yeah. that we got to really watch close so we don't end up that again. You well, want to talk about that. Yeah, I'm not aware of any purchase that's been made by the park board that was done without my knowledge. Okay, so everything does come through. Yeah, but I mean, I, and, and, and they can't obligate the city. And there's some to, miscommunication to somewhere because it came to us differently. Yeah. Okay, it came to us that they were going ahead and purchasing it and without a say so from you or anyone. Else. I, I'm not aware. Of, I, I mean, yeah. tell me what it is and maybe well, it happened. No, it may, <laughs> it may just be a, a misunderstanding along the line. Because I attend the meetings and I concur when they say we're going to buy something. I tell them if it has to be bid out because I'm familiar with the purchasing procedures. But then, not, who, but then who, I guess, is the city employee the person researching the best deal and purchasing and, and making the order for the parts or equipment? Or is it just park board members, individuals? We, park, I think the concern is... Park board members may do that. And I, 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 don't, I, I don't know what their role would be if they didn't do that. Um, then if it's, a, if it's an item I that requires would, competitive bidding, I make sure that gets done. I think that anything that they, they want to spend the money on that we fought hard to get for them should have to come through City Hall, purchases be arranged, through a city staff member. Okay. If they can research it and say, come to you and say, look, we want benches, we found three benches that we like, and this is the price, and so we've picked this one. And and this is number two, this is number three. Let's see what Tom's going through. Let's, let's don't go out, have them go out on a whim and think this is a good deal and not come through the city but and find out you, things. <clears throat> if they make a purchase that either hasn't been vetted by the board or I don't have knowledge of, I'm not going to pay the bill when it comes across my desk. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Gotcha. It was just a work bringing up, I think, for for our sake. But I'll I'll make sure the screws are tightened on that. Just to Good. address your concern. Good. Anything uh, on Dave? Yeah. Eric. Eric. Uh, I have too much to report. Probably the biggest thing. Um that I wanted you guys to be aware of tonight was the uh, the Senate Bill 5 that came down recently uh, pertaining to the court revenues, court fines. Um, I've attached the, the memo that we got from the judge, which is also posted on the door here. Uh, it's just going to change a lot of the ways that we've been doing things. It's, it's specific to municipal court systems. Uh, these do not pertain to state court systems um, and, and essentially limits the overall amount that you can find somebody for a for a violation, um, and also the collection method, uh, when warrants can be issued, and and when you can detain somebody to uh, to help facilitate their payment of fines. So, I would anticipate a pretty substantial uh, change in our in our court revenues, um, and that can certainly be addressed. I would say a decrease. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of this stems from the from the Ferguson fiasco uh, a couple years ago. Um, 
and and there may be some abuse in in some of those municipal municipalities up there i don't think that we've ever abused it we're nowhere near the threshold that that the states have have mandated as far as the operating budget and how much of that budget comes from court revenues we couldn't touch it if we wanted to but um, <coughs> And again, not for lack of trying, but the, their their hope and goal is to not make the the municipal court a money making venture, which we've always established here and and tried to maintain. Uh, but these unfortunately don't just affect the Fergusons and the and the municipalities in the in the city; they affect every municipality in the state. So, uh, when this question comes up at budget time, you'll have some. Heads up that that I anticipate a, a significant decrease. Yes, sir. So we were going to have a meeting on these DWI tickets, moving them back to the city before the budget next year. I don't know that we have any issue with that any any longer. I mean, there are some DWIs that we have to run through state. A second DWI has to go through state. We don't have any any discretion in that. The first DWIs can run through through the city. Uh, we have run those through the city uh, with the procedures that the state courthouse have have implemented for what they call their no refusal county. Uh, the the city has adopted, and when the participants are cooperative on their first DWI, and we don't have to apply for a search warrant, then it goes through the city. If they're uncooperative and we have to apply for a search warrant, the city can't can't issue a search warrant for that and it goes through the state but my understanding is that that was worked out when you addressed it the very first time uh, I never did ever hear a report back on uh, I thought we were going to look into it uh, we've addressed it a couple times now here um, again there, there are just some DWIs that cannot can, can't be run through the city if, if somebody is a multiple offender they're, they're required by law to, to go through the state court system um, and that's just something that's out of our hands um, but my understanding is all the the other uh, first-time offense DWIs that are cooperative and, and don't require a search warrant to get their blood uh, are going through the city I mean the the ultimate outcome of that is is again out of my hands but um, but that's what we've done for a while Yes, sir. There is a bill pending that is a problem for St. Genevieve. And that is what they're trying to do now is they noted that Ferguson and maybe some other cities up north <coughs> have been raising money that they've lost on the traffic side through nuisance enforcement. And so what they want to do is take away the city's ability to use uh, fines and um, our court power to enforce nuisances and I'm suggesting to you aldermen that you get call, your calls are from people that that are next door to a nuisance and uh, you don't want st. Genevieve to be punished for what I would consider to be uh, oppressive nuisance charges that happen in, in a city or a couple of cities up in st. Louis we do a really good, our staff does a really good job of working with people, but when it really comes down to it, we will hold them to uh, the law. And if we, have to, if we have to cite them every day, we'll cite them every day. But uh, these folks in Jefferson City think that uh, municipalities are brutalizing the people in, in their community, and it's really the other way around. If we don't have those powers, we're not going to be able to make the, your constituents happy regarding getting rid of nuisances. The bill is pending. Martin could probably flip out, uh, send out an email uh, to you. You need to voice your opposition to applying that outside of St. Louis County or wh wherever the problem is. It shouldn't be applied to a community that depends on nuisance enforcement. We, we depend on it. That's what we don't depend on the financial right. correct Not financial. No. yeah just to keep right. compliance yeah, but yeah. I, I don't right. want 50 people tomorrow saying well what they're going to do uh, Alderman Couch they, they want to take that money 
and put that in uh, under the, the, the limit of how much you can raise. We, we're well under the yeah. limit. It's yeah. not an issue with St. Genevieve, but it is an issue uh, that somehow th these guys are trying to get TV time and saying how they're defending the, the poor oppressed folks that can't afford to keep up their properties. Mm -hmm. We don't have that problem, and we don't. We don't. That's the last thing we use is the court system anyway. So there's a bill. Uh, it, it, it's floating around, but you need to take the opportunity to express. The uh, House or Senate bill? I think it's a Senate bill. Um, you know, I heard about it. Court crimes from people. And they're talking about ridiculous things that are happening in Pine Lawn. And, right. Yeah, and, and I thought, well, it was. That's not us. Well, <laughs> yeah, we're we're community-based enforcement, and so our police department, our staff, talks to folks, and we're not just trying to raise money. We don't want their money. We, we want the property claim. I can't down. imagine how much money we could have possibly raised by doing that in the last year. I would say it'd be almost nothing. There are times when we need to have the financial threat, yeah, at, uh, put in front of them. And say, look, you want to you want to play games. The, yeah, there is a financial threat, yeah, it's, but it's, it's rare. It's only right. usually one or two people. Yeah. I mean, the two houses that we right. worked through the last couple of years, and, and listen, it's just tall grass. That's a nuisance, yeah. and we we got to have some way to enforce that. And fines are our way. They're going directly after the tall grass revenue. Yeah, the the bill is whether right. it'll pass will depend on. So, question: If this bill passes, does that automatically mean we have to abide by what that is? Really, stay long, and that's where we're at on this other yeah. bill that is right. that is passed. Right. This is and this one. You know, right. Somebody can fail to appear, and there's no consequence. Right. So they'll, they'll get a letter that says, "Yeah, please come to court." <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the first invitation didn't work, so you know, get a T-shirt. Pretty, pretty, please come. So there'll be no penalty for people. Who it's don't. it's a very delayed penalty. I, I, I would I would prefer to allow the system to work. Uh, through the court system, and right. I don't think we want to tell the, the community uh, where there may be some softness. Right. Uh, what we want to do is work with the people. We we, we divert a lot of folks to, to counseling, uh, probation, uh, and we try to we make parents come in with the kids. Um, we're easier than we probably should be, essentially. Yeah, I, I think we do an okay job, and I don't know that it's that we're going to have a lot of folks that are going to uh, ignore their first experience with the court system. Most people around here take it seriously. Anything else for Eric? Uh, quickly, I've, we've, we've gotten our cameras installed that we were able to purchase with our portion of the money. We're still waiting to hear from the Community Foundation. Uh, I don't know. How optimistic to be with that? I, I don't anticipate getting a tremendous amount of support on that, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Eric, officers are working out well. We're not losing anybody, and everybody's happy right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood. We're right. full staff, and everybody seems to be be doing fine. Uh, let's not jinx, jinx it. Okay. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Anything else from the board? Okay, I don't think there's going to be, I don't think there's any public comments. No? Okay. Uh, minutes from January the 28th. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we've got a resolution 2016-06. The resolution of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to execute a property maintenance agreement with Kevin M. Petty. This guy's just putting a garden in, right? Right. So, no problem with this whatsoever. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we got no old business under new business, bill number 4087, first reading. An ordinance approving a budget amendment to the City of St. Genevieve fiscal year 2016 budget relating to the Federal Levy Fund budget number 45 and the Capital Improvements Fund number 70. I make a motion to approve. Second. 
Motion all in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, bill number 4088, first reading. An ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Bayer Engineering LLC of Perryville, Missouri for construction inspection services for the St. Genevieve River Beautification and Hiking Trail Project STP-9900-025 in an amount not to exceed $59,403.18 upon MoDOT approval if required. I'd like to point out that, that the, this is just a guaranteed maximum. We're paying hourly and we'll only pay for the work that is performed. And we hope that it's expected to be less than that. How much is this covered by the Eighty percent. No difference. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Um, we need a here for time is kind of over the essence, so we. I'd, I'd like yeah. to make a motion for a second reading for the previous uh, <coughs> this past. Second. All in favor, second reading of 4088. Aye. Opposed? Okay, second reading, Bill number 4088. In the ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Bayer Engineering LLC of Perryville, Missouri for construction and inspection services. For the St. Genevieve River Beautification and Hiking Trail Project, STP 9900-025, in an amount not to exceed $59,403.18 upon MoDOT approval if required. Approval. Second. And roll call. Alderwoman Codwell? Yes. Alderman Couch? Yes. Alderman John Stupe? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Hook? Yes. Alderman Donnie Stoopy, yes. Alderman Prince, yes. Alderman Ruzica. Yes. Eight yes, zero no's. Bill number 4088 now becomes Ordinance 4024. Hey, Martin, do we have any idea what this is going to cost when it comes to bid? So we got something from Malappy here for 370000 and we'll get 80% of that, right? Uh, no. Um, the... the, the the project exceeds the cost that were originally estimated and the grant was awarded. So we have 280 available in grant funds. Uh, but we decided to proceed, well, when we first bid it, it was 400 and something. Mm -hmm. And we, 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 we thought we could make some revisions. We made those revisions and rebid it. And it came in at 370,000, which is more than the funds that are available from a grant, even if you, you know, have 20%. So it is our position, and we've decided, and I think you supported it, that this is part of the kind of levy-related recreation and trail projects, and that we could use levy funds to make up the difference, and so that's what we'll be doing. Okay. This this has just been a long, yeah, drawn out eight years. Eight years. Yeah. 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 So we're going to use levy funds for this. Yes. Okay. All right. So what I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay, bill number 4089, first reading. In ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Floppy Cement Finishing Incorporated of Perryville, Missouri, in the amount of $370,049.49. Oh, that's supposed to be in nine cents. That's all right. That's what mine says. For the St. Genevieve River Beautification yeah. and Hiking Trail Project number STP 9900-025. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion. I'm sorry. sorry. Second. The reading for uh, I don't know. The city contractor agreement, I think, was taken from another package. It mentions Taylor Engineering. And it doesn't, you're not using Taylor Engineering. No, we're not using Taylor Engineering. It doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that we need in the city uh, contractor yeah. agreement. If you allow me a chance to polish on it tomorrow, uh, I don't have a problem, but I want to amend the city contractor agreement and use Bear Engineering instead of Taylor and add a few things about, uh, well, there's requirements regarding uh, OSHA training and... Yeah, but this Taylor, I mean, the whereas Taylor is properly referenced. Yeah. They did the original design. They did the design work. Bear's just doing the construction inspection. Is that what's new? I, well, the insurance, 
Why are we Why are we requiring them to ensure Taylor Engineering? But it, it doesn't have the, the the There's about four or five requirements yeah. that have to be in city contracts now. Well, this was taken straight from um, the state. Contract. The state and the state approved it, so yeah. that's why. But they that. approved it eight years ago. No, they no. approved it last week. Well, it, does, it doesn't have the stuff in it that needs to be in. No, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yes. I can, we can do that yeah. tomorrow. <clears throat> so do I need to amend the motion? To uh, subject to the submittal of <coughs> additional information as required by the city attorney. Well, should we, should we also have in there for the city river beautification? You know, that's just... That was just the original yeah. name of it. Okay. The part just got cut so off just of leave it. it. We I took out the hiking, the, the biking part of it, but the, you know, okay. it's just a name. Well, did we vote on the second read? No, we did not. Uh, do we? So we need to make a motion. Joe, did you make the motion to amend or with his amendments? With the amendments uh, necessary by the city attorney. Okay. To fulfill our legal it. obligation. I'll second it. Okay. And now he's asking for all a in favor to second reading. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Bill number 4089, second reading with uh, with the stated change or the amendment. <laughs> An ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Lafayette Cement Finishing Incorporated of Perryville, Missouri in the amount of $370,049.09 for the St. Genevieve River Beautification and Hiking Trail Project, number STP 9900-025. Motion to approve with, uh, with the review of the city attorney or whatever I need to say there. Frank, <laughs> yeah. can I ask you a question? Okay. Yes. And I don't want to get stuck on this point, okay? And I'm sorry that I am. But I don't know if this comes before this, the citizens in St. Genevieve, and they look at this and they say, all right, we got river beautification. And nothing happens. Do we strike out the river beautification? The, well, yeah. what, what it really deals That's with is name. The, the project. That's what I'm saying. It's the name of the project. Okay. Uh, you can, but you can the contents it. of the project are Anything. limited to what uh, Mr. Tolman gave you and anybody that wants to see the project would see what what it contains the label if you're uncomfortable with the label it, it wouldn't bother anybody if you change the label but uh, but originally this thing was set up to be a river beautification wasn't it yes and that was struck out of there so all we have is a hiking trail now but I guess but the state as far as the project itself yeah the goes, that STP ninety nine kept, zero kept was, that part of the they name kept the it. label but, the this, but change the project. Right. You can't change the state's label, I don't think. Okay. Well, I mean, I've just had some years. cases. It might take it years. nowhere near yeah. worth the effort. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Yeah, all right. You got the mm -hmm. first and the second. Okay. Okay, roll call. Alderman Rizika? Yes. Alderman Prince? Yes. Alderman Donnie Sissy? Yes. Alderman Hook? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Johnston? Uh, yes. Alderman Couch? Yes. Alderman Codwell? Yes. Eight yes, zero no's. Bill number 4089 now becomes ordinance 4025. Thank you. Bill number 4090, first reading. An ordinance approving a bid proposal <laughs> from Seidner Environmental Services, St. Louis, Missouri, for a new polymer feed system at the water plant <coughs> and an amount not to exceed $6,811. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No second reading. Okay, okay. All right, under other business, we have approval of a street closure for a 5K run hosted by the National <coughs> Junior Honor Society of St. Genevieve R2 right, School make, District. Make a motion for approval. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And approval of a temporary liquor license for the Friends Foundation of St. Jennifer County Memorial Hospital for Saturday, April 2nd at the St. Jennifer County Community Center for the Taste of St. Jennifer County. I make Council. a motion for approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
and uh, approval of a liquor license for Chalmette Incorporated, 9 North Main Street, for the sale of all kinds of liquor by the drink and includes Sunday sales. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we would like to have a motion to go into closed session to discuss personnel. Make a motion. Make a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Who got it? Hey. Alderwoman Cabla? Yes. Alderman Couch? Yes. Alderman John Stooping? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Hook? Yes. Alderman Donnie Stooping? Yes. Alderman Prince? Yes. Alderman Rizika? Yes. Okay.